This is really cool. Look at that, man. The stars, this is nuts. Virtual reality and the Oculus Quest might be some of the coolest and most discussed technology that we have available to date. Oh god. But with a $400 price point and essentially no scientific information as to the effects that it could have, is it really worth it to buy for the average consumer? We're gonna go over some of the potential effects that VR might have on mental and physical health. Like, that's pretty brutal. The potential professional uses for VR and what we're already seeing it used for, what experiences are available to you within your Oculus, and the future benefits or consequences that technology like this could have. Which leads me to my first problem with the Quest. Space. When you first load up the Oculus, you'll be prompted to make a guardian, or a play area. This guardian essentially acts as a boundary zone that will pop up when you step too close or too far out of the guardian zone that you made. This is meant to help prevent collisions with real world objects, but it really doesn't do much other than providing a few red lines, and once you become experienced with the quest, it really becomes insignificant in the greater scheme of things. While this is definitely more of an issue on the user end of the Oculus, I still think it was important to note, especially if you live in a small area like me, like a dorm room, the Oculus Quest may not perform very well in that type of play area or environment. On the other note, however, the Oculus Quest 2 is a completely wireless system, meaning as long as it's charged, you can bring it anywhere you want, so if you can't play in your room, you can play somewhere else, literally anywhere, making it the first fully immersive and portable system available on a consumer level. However, I think it's also important to note that the Oculus Quest does remember the guardians in the rooms that you place them in, meaning it can actively recognize where you are playing from. Let's be honest here, it's really no secret that Facebook has had their fair share of privacy and security issues in the past, and the fact that Oculus Quest evidently recognizes various environments means that it stores information in some way shape or form. Of course, there really is no evidence to suggest that the technology is being used in any malicious way or even being stored, but regardless, I still thought it was something important to mention. While the Oculus Quest certainly still needs improvement in terms of visual quality and real world safety, this is definitely the best bang for your buck in terms of VR headsets at this current time. It's important to note that for this next section, Everybody experiences things differently, so the effects that the Quest has had on me and my experiences overall with it could be significantly different than how you perceive it and how your experience is within the headset, and I just wanted to make that noted. Before purchasing my Quest, like many of you, I tried to do some research as to the scientific evidence behind mental and physical effects that virtual reality could have, and found almost nothing outside of a few TEDx talks. While I'm no scientist and can't really speak on how VR has affected people as a general population, I can say that the Quest is a system that is best used less than an hour at a time, especially starting off. As I've started to get more used to the Quest, it certainly does become more bearable to stay inside for longer and the effects of nausea and headaches kind of start to go away. Uh, I'm not seeing the, those as often anymore in my experiences with the headset, but it was something that I definitely took a note of when I initially started. And it's also important to note that I have bad motion sickness to some extent. Many times that I've been on boats, I always have a hard time and I always have to take whatever it is that you take. I always forget what it's called. <laughs> um, so I'm sure that in large part plays a very big role in my experience within the headset, but I also think because of that, it shows us an area that still needs development, such as having a smooth and immersive experience. What just happened to my arm? Okay, um, anyway. Making things that are truly feel like reality so people feel grounded and not having this motion sickness. And again, while we don't truthfully know the long-term effects of VR, the short-term issues that I have personally experienced are not permanent and in all honesty are to be expected. When you actively trick your brain into a world that is not only structurally different, but graphically as well, it's no surprise that our brains are going to have a hard time adjusting to that style or reality. But generally, I feel like for the vast majority of the population, the Oculus Quest does a pretty good job. The Oculus Quest only has a battery life of two hours regardless, which to most people sounds like a downside, but from personal experience, like I said, it serves as a good limitation to prevent users from being completely entrapped in the world uh, because it really does get you 
involved very well, especially with some of the games that have been released. I can't say that there's anything that's been truly phenomenal in terms of games, but there's definitely potential for some incredible experiences to be made and some really life-changing games. If you get a good team of artists and you get a good system that could handle that type of processing, you could definitely make something absolutely touching. Overall though, when taking off the headset after an hour of play, I've noticed mild headaches lasting between 20 minutes to an hour. Uh, there's definitely some disorientation, but that's again one of those effects that's kind of withered as I've been in the headset more often. But at the same time, these effects partially come down to what it is that you're doing inside of the quest, inside of VR. Are you playing games that have been endlessly beta tested prior to release for the most optimal and smooth experience, or are you spending most of your time inside of YouTube VR where there's really not much security or testing in terms of render quality for what that video is going to look like on a wider scale? I've noticed that depending on whether I'm exclusively playing games or watching YouTube VR, the mental and physical effects change once I have taken off the helmet, implying that optimization and render quality are two areas that are still lacking, despite them being at a good level of standard. But this is something that can't really be blamed on the Oculus Quest, as it is incredibly difficult to get that type of processing power into such a small machine. It is incredibly difficult to do that. So in that regard, I give credit where credit is due. The Oculus Quest does do a fantastic job at what it was made to do. And I'm curious to see how it will hold up in the future as CGI gets better, as people learn how to implement games and more videos into VR for the best experience. I'm really curious how it's gonna hold up and how much data and how much detail it's really going to take to make this thing lag and start having a hard time processing things. But moving on to the practicality and uses of VR, I have to say that this is definitely one of the coolest things I've ever used, and I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's important to understand that the Oculus Quest gives you free range and ability to inspect and navigate a completely virtual world, a place that does not exist, but you could do anything within. And this virtual world in a very short amount of time could become essentially indistinguishable from what we see visually in reality outside of the physical senses, which even those are starting to be overwritten. They now have full body suits that will have reactive touch, so if you get hit in the game, stab, punch, kicked, whatever, you'll feel it in real life. And the amount of content inside of VR and 360 is going to increase in the next few years, and I think that is almost a guaranteed fact. But even outside of a consumer and relaxation level, even on a professional level, the Oculus does a pretty decent job at allowing VFX and CGI artists, or really anyone interested or involved in digital design and architecture, to see their models and work in a real-time rendering, first-person interactive view meaning that you can actively inspect, hold, move around, and work on your 3D model within that virtual space. The only downside to that with the Oculus Quest specifically is that the Oculus Quest does not come with the USB cord needed to connect it to your computer. Now while it does seem stupid at first, it really doesn't make any sense uh, when you think about it. There's no reason why they would need to include that. Um, they could have made an adapter or something and included it with the charging cord because that's really all you need. But at the same time, most people aren't purchasing the Oculus Quest for development reasons. Most people aren't purchasing the Oculus Quest just because they're artists trying to see their work. They're doing it to relax and enjoy the experience, right? But I could totally see the Oculus becoming a tool in classrooms, hospitals, military training, and more. Even you play Pavlov, that game is absolutely phenomenal. And while I can't necessarily say that that's how it would really feel, the reload mechanics, things like that, it really is the closest to reality that we have outside of reality. While the Quest and VR in general do have a long ways to go in terms of smooth movement and immersiveness, the quality that you get with the Quest at its price point is absolutely unquestionable. If you're trying to inspect your models, if you're trying to just have a good time, if you're trying to watch movies on the big screen, if you're trying to just simply get away and have your own little private area, this Quest is absolutely for you. With the world now truly at your fingertips, you can travel anywhere or learn anything in real time as if you were there. You can experience places that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to go physically, like space or being on stage with Elton John. 
VR is a scary but cool concept and one that I implore you to think about and think very carefully about if you are considering purchasing a Quest or a virtual reality headset of any kind. It's a piece of technology that, again, like I said, I think everybody should have access to at some point in their lives, but it is also important to note that right now in the current moment, we truthfully know nothing about it.